back to today's episode. I have a special guest to meet today, and I know that you are going to be so inspired, but uh, I know that I've been so um, blessed to meet Rebecca Faith. We just met about, well, actually less than a year ago, and Mm -hmm. just watching you and hearing your story has really... um, been an inspiration but also so much joy I see so much joy coming off of you Rebecca and I know that your story brings so much hope so thank you for coming and be my guest today at the show yes it's such a joy to be here thank you for having me You're welcome. So just to give you a little background, the audience here is a faith-based audience, and I like to talk to women who are getting their message out there, but are also women who are who are passionate about transformation. They have a story Mm. of their own transformation, but they also realize that, you know, we have a voice that is given to us by God to be able to bring hope and healing to those in our earshot. And so I know that you are one who um, is multi-talented, but I, I know we met at a activate conference, which is the girl power Alliance annual conference. And you and your team were the, worship team there. And one Mm -hmm. thing that I really loved about what you and your team do, and specifically you, is that in the midst of leading worship, you're sharing your story. You were sharing Mm -hmm. a bit of your journey, which really brought such a deeper connection with the people there. I don't know if you do that all the time when you are asked to lead worship, but I felt like there was such a a, a deeper connection that happened. You just didn't come lead worship. We're here to lead worship, which is all great. You're very anointed, but I felt like you went one step further that really brought something really, really special into that place because of you being able to weave in your story. Uh, so I just want, I want you to know that, that, uh, that was really powerful. So Rebecca, I was wondering if you could share a little bit about how you came to do what you're doing today, leading worship, speaking, you and your husband, travel around. Tell me a little bit about that yes. journey. Wow. Um, well, I when I gave my life to the Lord, really at 13, because I'd, I'd gotten saved a few multiple hundred times, you know, just to make sure. <laughs> but when I when I really gave him my life and he became my Lord, And I prayed a simple prayer to him at the age of 13. And I said, whatever you ask of me, I will do for you. And because I knew he was just inviting me to something so much bigger than I, than I even realized. And so I had no idea what yes would do in, in my life, the places that it would take me. And so I went to Bible college because I didn't know I wanted to be in ministry. I, you know, I grew up in the Mennonite Amish area and women aren't, really in ministry. You know, that's not something super um, typical where I come from. Um, Typically women are the homemakers. And, and to be honest, I wanted that. I wanted a family. I I love all of that, but I, I wanted it as an and not as an either or. And so I I went to Bible college and then I went to uh, full-time ministry. I, I moved to South Africa and um, I, I was just so hungry to get out and see the world and And really just give and serve. And um, I was 21. And so I I, I left America and I ventured to Africa. And, you know, Americans are funny. Uh, They just (laughs) the questions like, can you wear jeans? Are you going to have to live in a hut? You know, (laughs) and so it was it was a big culture shock for me, for sure. Um, I, you know, I grew up very sheltered and and I was just so innocent. And I was so I just wanted to give God you know, everything. And I wanted to reach people and I wanted to, you know, reach hurting people and Mm -hmm. remind them that they were loved and that, and that there was a God who loved them. And so, um, that took me there. And then from there, I met my husband, um, who I actually already knew, but he is South African and we got married in South Africa. Um, and we lived there together for another four years. So I was there for seven years altogether. And just, um, I think, you know, relationships are currency in the kingdom of God. And so um, not just uh, going into ministry, but going into ministry with the right people, not just getting married, but getting married to the right person, Um, Mm -hmm. not just having friends, but having the right friends, not just having relationships, but having God give relationships, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, which is how I see you. I just, when I met you in October last year, 
And I just, I was just watching you. I was watching everyone. Everything was new for me. And I was trying to figure out like, who are these women? <laughs> you know, what are they, what are they all about? Like, I like this. What is, mm -hmm. what is happening here? And, and as I was watching you, I just, I saw this woman who just had so much um, fire in her, mm -hmm. but still this um, maturity. Uh, which, you know, that combination is a little more rare than I wish it was, um, you know, mm -hmm. but it was like, like I want to be like that. I want to, I want to carry that, um, you wow. just carry yourself with this authority, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I feel like what, what took me around the world, the Lord did, um, you know, I can't say that each step I was so full of faith and, you know, was just like, oh Lord, of course, everywhere you go, it's just amazing. He, he asked of me things where I'm like, I'm not qualified. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how we're going to pay for this. I don't know how this is even possible, but giving him your yes and then partnering with him, mm. not just to do things for him, but to do things with him. And it, it's changed my life, you know, and mm. that's what brought us to Sarasota, Florida, where we've um, just relocated here two weeks ago. Um, not even tomorrow's two weeks and just, um, you know, expanding your territory. We pray these dangerous mm -hmm. prayers, yes. Yes. you know, like <laughs> Lord enlarge my territory and, and, you know, spirit lead me where my trust is without borders. And, you know, it's so powerful in worship, but he starts to do it. And we're just like, devil get behind me, you know, <laughs> and we don't even realize it's God because he starts touching things that are personal. He starts dealing with heart issues like, like forgiveness, you know, mm. and he starts when he starts um, placing dreams inside of us, it doesn't fit in our little box. Mm. It, it really honestly requires the box to kind of be blown up, you know, and so removed true. even as a point of reference. And, um, and so that's so kind of in a, in a nutshell, we went from South Africa to Europe. We were there for about a year and a half. And then we moved to Florida and then we moved to Tennessee and then we moved to California. And now we're in Florida again in a different part. And, um, you know, for us, uh, I don't know, we're kind of like nomads in a way, I guess. It's just how we, <laughs> how we put it. And, um, and I'm not afraid to put down roots, but I also don't need roots because I'm, I'm, you know, we're just here on a mission and our life is short. I, I would love to live like three or four lives to be able to do and be everything that I, I want to be. But this is where we are. And so making the most of it and just, we kind of call it, you know, being led by the wind. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, so I have a cool. friend in high school and she's never moved from the area we grew up in and she's managing a hotel there and all of this. And she looks at me and says, your life makes me so tired. I don't know how I would do it. And I looked at her and I said, your life makes me so tired. I don't know how I would do it. And so I think the the takeaway for all of us is, you know, to live your life according to how God is leading you, um, according to what, how he wired you, how he built you. And that may even change from season to season. Mm -hmm. you, you may find yourself doing the things that you said, I'll never, ever, you know, because that's kind of how God works, works in the impossible. And so, um, so here true. we are looking for the next adventure. So. I love that. I love that. Yeah. So I was thinking about that. You know, it says in the scriptures that we don't know where the spirit goes and comes from, right? We're just right. like, you know, if we're led by the spirit, sometimes our life looks like that. It does. So I'm curious, Rebecca, that you, because I know that you were brought up Amish Mennonite, mm -hmm. uh, it, and I'm not sure what, what level of that in terms of old order or what oh, okay. what, what, what degree not, not everybody <laughs> knows the the differences yeah the nuances of that so but I'm curious how that all changed for you because looking at you today you were very much you know spirit filled on fire yeah. <laughs> yeah. embracing the things of the spirit and free in many ways yeah. that I would not characterize as that culture so very how did much. that happen for you Mm. Well, number one, never discount the decisions that you make, even if you feel they're small, because mm -hmm. those decisions compound over generations. And so I look at my grandparents who were Amish. Um, my father was, was born Amish and raised Amish until he was about 12 years old. And then, and I asked my dad this again, just the other week, I said, dad, 
tell me again, why did grandma and grandpa leave the Amish? Because it's very unusual to leave after you've been baptized into the Amish church. Um, you know, there's all kinds of TV shows about the Amish and Amish gone wild and, you know, whatever those, whatever those crazy shows are, they're not real. Um, <laughs> but whatever they are, um, one of them almost got me. They did it really good and they used local people and interviewed them, but the people didn't know what they were being interviewed for. Anyway, oh. it's, it's actually kind of sad when they pieced it all together and they gave it the appearance of something. But, mm. um, you know, growing up, you don't, you don't really leave the Amish because, you're shunned. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that's something that the Pennsylvania Amish practice that not every um, group of Amish, like there's Ohio Amish and Indiana yeah. Amish. And um, I know Canada has Mennonites. Canada, yes. Do they well, have, we Amish? have Amish? In Ontario, right. there's a, in Ontario, there's a huge colony. Yeah. Wow. And so not everyone is exactly the same, but where mm -hmm. I grew up in Lancaster, you know, they're very famous because it's a very big population of Amish and they've got a lot of tourism around the the you know the different places and the interesting names of the towns and things um, but my grandparents wanted to give their children something more spiritually I just wow. I can't get over that because wow. they lost a lot they lost relationships many of my grandparents uh, my grandpa's siblings are still Still Amish today, and they cut off relationship him. And when you leave, you're not allowed to have anything to do. They treat you as if you're dead, but they'll be in your presence, talking about you, yeah. mourning you in the past tense, you know. And you're not allowed to do business together. My grandfather had a business for barn equipment and farming. They're not allowed to do business with you. They're not allowed to sit at the same table with you. You're not allowed to shake mm. hands. It's just so many things now. Of wow. course, like any other religion or rules, there's people who follow and people who don't, you know, but they, they lost a lot. They lost a lot just to mm -hmm. give their children something more than my parents. They were raised um, in, in a, a kind of a, a part of it called the Mennonite Amish. So when my grandparents left, they were allowed, they left to a different church that um, they could drive cars and have electricity. Um, because that's what my dad would have grown up without. They had horse and buggy and mm. they did not have electricity. But when they left the Amish, they joined the Amish Mennonite church <laughs> mm. and or it's called the beachy Amish. And um, so it, it, it shifted a bit um, in a, really in a significantly spiritual way because the Amish, they, they don't actually believe in salvation. So they're non-evangelical. So they're mm -hmm. not trying to evangelize because um, either you choose the Amish way and you live as righteous as you can, mm -hmm. hoping in salvation. So their, their salvation mm -hmm. isn't even guaranteed to them. And so wow. it's so the emphasis of works is just is is crazy um, because their their whole belief is if I can just be holy enough or mm -hmm. um, you know then I can I can maybe get to heaven where the Mennonites believe in in in, in salvation and they believe that um, anyone can come but they do believe in a very you know simple and pure lifestyle they're very conservative minded mm -hmm. Um, my grandparents specifically, you know, my grandma still, they made their own clothing, cape dresses. They never cut their hair, no makeup, no jewelry, wear the big covering, yeah. um, you know, and, but they, they do missions into different countries and they help underprivileged. Mm. They reach out, you know, yeah. a lot more where the mm -hmm. Amish are, are uh, definitely more um, cl closed, you know, and just into their own sort of little community. But family values are very strong for both. Well, then mm -hmm. my parents in this little Mennonite church that I was born and raised in when I was about probably six years old, by accident, got filled with the spirit, not on purpose. Sometimes he just does that. He doesn't like sneak attack, you know. <laughs> exactly. And so they did. They got filled with the spirit. And it was a game changer. Wow. And several couples had gone to this conference and just started, they just got filled without even, without even, um, uh, an, understanding like an invitation yeah and they started speaking in tongues and just were filled truly with the power of holy spirit well it began to change everything in the little mennonite church you know they brought in drums they were writing their own worship songs <laughs> you know it's like this is not okay you know and uh <laughs> and so they ended up a team of them buying a church uh, an old sports property and turning the gym into a gymnasium and starting a church and that's where i was raised really in a true atmosphere of hunger for god wow. um they were very prophetic whether they knew it or not, I was raised, you know, with a very big awareness of just 
prophecy and the voice of God and, you know, mm-hmm. God um, and the power of God and the spirit of God being a, a part of your everyday life as opposed to a religion that says, well, I've got one day that's open to God and the rest is closed, you know, but mm-hmm. really inviting him in. And so that's that's how I was raised, you know, by parents who really truly just loved the Lord and sought him. They were involved in missions. And so I started traveling the world when I was 17. We were a part of a network of churches that was based in Europe, a strong prophetic and apostolic. Mm-hmm. And so uh, it was just amazing kind of growing up in that that's where I went to Bible college and so uh talk about the difference from one generation to another based on your choices and decisions you know the Amish don't play instruments yeah they're not allowed to fly in airplanes two things I literally do for a living (laughs) and I wouldn't be doing that if my grandparents hadn't said we want to give wow our children something more Wow, that is so powerful, just to even how you frame that, Rebecca, in terms of the choice, right? Mm-hmm. What one choice can lead to generationally and what a gift that you've been given because of those choices. I agree. Got, yeah, it's so powerful. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, yeah, so powerful. I'm sure we could talk more about that. But what would you say would be the mission that you're on today, you and your yeah. husband? What is your what is your passion I think really just to see people, you know, come alive, Mm. to see them come alive, to see them um, reconnected with the, the, the one who created them, who knows them, you know, I, I, in a, in a religious sort of culture um, or atmosphere, even though I was raised by parents who were hungry for God, the atmosphere that we were raised in was very religious and Mm -hmm. religion tells you um, uh, things without having to say it out loud. Right. So you, you, you kind of catch it, right. Rather than it being taught to you. And so I thought, you know, don't ask God questions, you know, don't be too loud. Don't be too colorful. Mm. You know, the Amish and and Mennonites are very, um, uh, overly, uh, overly aware. I mean, pride is not a good thing, (laughs) but they, they call things pride that as I, as I got delivered, to be honest, I realized me living in full color because this is who he created me to be is not pride. This is, this is giving him honor and glory, right? Mm -hmm. It's not, but it's coming through me, you know? And so I think that, um, finding that freedom, it just, it, it, it's contagious. It makes me want to give it to people. When I look at them and I'm like, Oh no, look at this sad. You can just see there's, there's sadness in their eyes or there's, Mm -hmm. there's hope deferred or we moved in here and I got to meet my neighbor lady across the road. Who's a single mom with four small kids. And, and I'm just watching her and I'm going, you're so overwhelmed. You're so, you're struggling to keep your head above water, you know, Mm -hmm. and my heart just goes out to her. This is, this is my life where it's, it's, Mm -hmm. I get to do this. I get to minister to people Mm -hmm. and, and look at them and say, father, show me what you see. Show me how you see. And then just giving them encouragement or we actually just started raising money for her. Um, I did it kind of secretly. And I was like, because I, I, I want to bless her. And, and this is what we get to do. And so my message, honestly, is one of freedom. Whether I talk about freedom or not, that's the result that I want to see is people just realizing, number one, I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm seen. I'm, I'm not invisible. Yeah. Uh, especially for uh, my heart for, you know, middle-aged women, because I'm becoming one, you know, it's like, <laughs> it's, your life is not over, you know, yeah. so many women with, with cre- creativity and these creative ideas, or even just, they want to pour it into their grandchildren, but they've lived a life that's, that maybe they've put a label on themselves or someone else has put a label on them. And it's like, that's the final it's done, but it's not, it's yeah. Your life is not done. There's still hope. There's still purpose. If you are breathing, you're here for a reason. And I, and that's, that's, oh man, I could talk about that forever. It's just, you know, coming alive. And, and, and so to do that, um, my husband and I have a coaching company because I realized, you know, I can go from church to church preaching messages of hope, but I want to get my hands dirty. Like I, it's, it's just not quite enough to offer hope and then leave. Yeah. And then not sure 
if, right. if people are, are even have access to resources to really help them. And so we started this coaching company and I'm passionate about it. I'm passionate about partnering with people and helping to okay. unlock things in them and taking them on a journey. And much like Jesus did it, just asking the right question, you know, and, and, and just seeing them come alive as they discover things that are put inside of them by God. It's not me telling them, you know, it's just truly walking with them on a journey, yeah. almost like a guide to say, Hey, yeah. do you see this? Do you see how, what a gift this is? Do you see that you're like this? Do you see the beauty and it's, it's sad how too often we don't see the beauty in ourselves. Mm -hmm. We see it in others. We can it's encourage so others. We give away yeah. to others. And then we come home and we look in the mirror and we trash talk ourselves. Yeah. You know, yeah. and we label ourselves. And so just helping people remove those labels on themselves, even that they've put there. You know, and just so good. That's so good, Rebecca. That's one of my core values is freedom. So I love oh, that. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Of course, Jesus came to set us free. It was for freedom. Yes, he did. For freedom. So yeah. I love that. <laughs> yeah. And I know that uh, you are on a mission. I know that you are impacting lives. And I know that we can continue this conversation probably for hours. I feel like I could yes. sit down with you for hours and have coffee. And so I will have to come to Sarasota one day. Same. Oh, do it. Do it. Come. <laughs> I'm just going to say, go maybe even go on a bike ride with you. <laughs> I love it. You are so welcome. You are so, in the winter, though, not in the summer. <laughs> In, in yeah, in your winter and my winter too. That would be that would suit me fine because it gets cold here. <laughs> yes, exactly. Perfect getaway. Exactly. Well, if someone wanted to follow you and find out more about what you do, about your coaching, where can they find you? Sure, you can connect on social. Um, predominantly on Instagram, um, it's at the Rebecca Faith. Uh, is my handle for Instagram. And then on Facebook, we have a funky last name. So I love how you said, I'm Lisa B because nobody can say my last name. I'm like, I need to be Rebecca M because <laughs> that's, that's actually my middle name is Faith. And so that's why I started going by Rebecca Faith. Number one, I just love the name. Yeah. Um, I'm named after my aunt, but obviously what it stands for. And um, and then just McGookin. It's an Irish name. People butcher it. McChicken, McGurkin, you know, you've got it all. And so, uh, but on Facebook, I'm Rebecca Faith. McGookin, M-C-G-U-I-C-K-E-N. And so you can find me there. You can find me on YouTube under Rebecca Faith. I'm on Spotify under Rebecca Faith as well. And oh. um, just just busy trying to get some newer resources out there. My music is older. Um, but if you go on, on uh, Facebook, I love to sit live behind the piano and just worship God and mm. just minister to people as they come on live. And so you can find older uh, videos on there for that. And I was kicked off Facebook for about a year. So I'm back on. Um, were you just, being, because you were telling the truth? What? Well, you know what? I don't know. No, I don't think so. Because um, there was nothing, I don't know. It's very strange. I think, honestly, I think there was some kind of mess up, but um, it's gone forever. And um, they said that I had posted some things that I know for a fact I did not post. Um, and, uh, so I, I'm not sure, but I'm back on. And so, um, but it took me a little while to get access to everything again. So, uh, it's, it's a pretty crazy situation, but here we are. <laughs> here you are. Well, I'll put some links down below wherever this video is so that Great. they can connect with you. But thank you so much, Rebecca, for coming on and sharing your story and for just being a light wherever you are and a joy to uh, help people just to rise up to a new level in Christ because, Hey, you know what? time is of the essence. We don't have time to just sit around and wonder. God right. is God is asking. He's saying, come on, let's go. We've got an adventure. And there's many, many people that need what we have as believers and, and we're the ones to bring them. So thank you for helping people to rise up to that next level so that they mm -hmm. can be activated in who they're called to be. And uh, thank That's you fair. so much for for what you bring. Thank yeah. you everyone for listening in today. Make sure you share this with your friends and check out Rebecca Faith. You love her music. You love her energy. You love what she brings. And I know that you'll be blessed. So thank you everyone. Have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.
As you're listening today, you may have felt prompted to say, I want to become a much better speaker. I want to be able to speak with confidence, clarity, and transformational impact. I want to invite you to check out the link in the comments below, wherever you're listening to this. Your voice is an instrument of transformation and needs to be heard. So let it be heard.